So yes. what do you know about him and kind of wh how are you taking it? It seems like it just doesn't matter. You're going to go in there and do you, but how are you looking it, at it, this? It's a funny story, man, because you're not going to believe this. Uh, the guy that I just beat is his teammate. No way. <laughs> Check it out. Let me tell you one. What is up, my MMA brothers and sisters? Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk MMA. And here with me, I have Daniel Prodigy Gonzalez. First off, how are you, sir? How are you today? Oh, man, I'm doing amazing, dude. I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> well, it's Sunday morning. I mean, are you, like, I don't know about you, but Sundays for me, like, they're very, like, uh, cooling. Like, the energy in the air is just, like, like just chill today. Like, how do you, what do yeah. you do on your weekends or your Sundays? Weekends are always my relaxing time. I'm always with my family. You know, people like to stay out, go out with their friends and stay busy. I'm a, I'm a very family oriented guy, so I like to be with them as much as I can. And today's football, so I'm going to enjoy football with my family. It's going to be a good day. Sweet, sweet. So it's like, uh, it really is like your job. Monday through Friday, handle business. But come weekend, hey, you got to take a break, right? And you got to kind of reset the mind. Exactly. And then like, we got to get ready because we have one more week of hard hard training so right now after this interview i'm gonna take a nice ice bath and you know kind of just relax the body because you know it's we go through hell every single day so uh you know it's gonna feel good to get back in that last final final week you know i cannot wait yeah because basically your your fight and obviously we'll get more into it your your pro debut well not pro debut but your pro debut in bellator uh your second uh pro fight uh september 23rd so this coming week today is september 10th so this coming week is your last week before you can kind of stop and then it's fight week yes sir so it's it's going down well let's kind of rewind a little bit and go back to when we last talked we talked about your uh, first actual pro debut with dragon house 25 you fought carlos hernandez and that was april 22nd and you won by unanimous decision i'm actually going to be showing the fight as we as we kind of talk right now and yes. the biggest takeaway i got out of that was how comfortable you were and just how many different techniques you were throwing it's like you were just testing all your different things so when you look back at that fight kind of what were you kind of thinking during that fight man i was just loose i was moving and i was grooving i was i was me <laughs> you know i was just like my, my coaches always tell me you know be you you know if if you're not you you know who are you you know that's so they, they literally told me that like i'm during this year, I just really like found myself, found me as a, as a man, as an athlete and as a fighter. And we're now putting it all together. You know, before like my amateur days, I was very, very stuck, very, oh, more worried about my opponents. What are they gonna do to me? I don't care about that at all anymore. I don't, I don't know who they are. I don't focus on their name. I don't care, they're just a body to me. Now I'm like implementing me, you know, every single day. And I find myself putting it all together now, how no matter what body it is in front of me, I can adapt to, have to adapt to any style, you know? That's why where I see fights going on or this fight or this guy in my division, I'm just kind of like, I can adapt, you know? It's whatever he brings, I can just showcase whatever I can do to him, you know? it's These guys are just names to me, they're bodies, you know? And, and my last fight was, uh, I was training for, I guess, another guy. And this guy came in uh, on weigh-ins, and I was trying to look for my opponent. I was like, "Where is this guy at? Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't see him. You know, where's my opponent?" And I was asking the commission, like, "Is my opponent here?" So they, yeah, he's right over there. I was like, "Okay, well, I don't see him." So they squared us up. They called his name. I was like, "Who the, who, who the hell is Carlos Hernandez? I, I wasn't supposed to fight you." And then they put, they say, "Up next, Daniel Gonzalez," and I was like, "And that was at the okay. weigh-in." This was at the weigh-in. <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about finding yeah. out in the last minute. Yeah. Like nobody told me anything. Like, no commission, no no promoter. So I was just kind of like, wow, this is kind of unprofessional. Yeah. You know? But I was like, all right, you know, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care who it is. And the fight showed itself, you know. I didn't. We didn't look up any tape on him. He was – our coach was just like, well, he fights He fights out of a, out of a gym. You know, he's a guy just like you. <laughs> he's another he's got human hair. being. Yeah, he's a human being. You know, whatever he brings to you, just showcase what you got. I was like, okay, you know. And as soon as we're going in there, I'm, I'm 
I'm smiling. I'm, I'm shimmy. I'm doing all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm just ready to go. Start the bell already, man. Let's go. The fight was just was just art to me. You know, I had a great time in there. I had fun. I literally had a fun time in there. Well, it was a 30-27. All judges scored it 30-27. Yeah. So it was a unanimous decision. And, and it was obviously pretty obvious. And, and I think, like I said, the, the most impressive thing for me was just how many different strikes. We were actually just talking a little bit about uh, Henry Cejudo, uh, yeah. who fought just yesterday. And, and that yeah. kind of reminds me of that. Like, he was a wrestler, but when he went into MMA, he's, he did a lot of striking. But what he was yesterday was yeah. this whole new person. So with you, it kind of reminds me of that, where you put it all together and you showcased so many different things. And now, after that fight, t take us along the ride of how after that fight, we get this Bellator news. Obviously, now this is your next fight coming up. So how did that kind of uh, manifest itself? Yeah, so, you know, I, I get a call, you know, this is like at 11, probably 11 p.m. I'm with my family on the weekend, enjoying them like I always do. And uh, I get a call from my manager, and uh, it's weird. I was just like, this is kind of strange. I mean, he, he wouldn't have called me unless I have something. So he told me, he was like, hey, Daniel, how does uh, September uh, 23rd sound to you? And I was like, I know what date that is. Like, are you serious right now? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. He's like, it's Bellator, man. How does that How does that sound to you? And I was like, man. I literally paused and I was just like, he was like, hey, Dan, are you there? And I was like, man, let's do it. You know, give me, give me any way. I don't care. I just want to be on that card. You know, give me anybody. And he was just like, all right, man, it's, we're in talks right now. Uh, don't say anything, don't post anything, just kind of keep it quiet. And, uh, you know, we'll give you some news, you know, very soon. And, uh, I was happy, man. I, I literally like my family was around me. They were, they were recording my reaction because I had my phone wow. on speaker. They were like blown away. They were just like, holy shit. Like this is happening. My, yeah. My family was all around me. So they're just like, dang, dude, all this is coming so, so fast. But they, my, my family knows, I mean. It's, it is coming fast, but it's something that we're not surprised about. You know, it's it, it's bound to happen. Um, all the things that are coming towards me, it's it's supposed to happen. You right. know, I don't I don't bust my ass every day for no reason. Yeah. You know, I I put everything aside just so I can do this. And when we got that call, I was just kind of like, I couldn't sleep that night. I was just like, <laughs> damn, like counting how many weeks it was away. And then. Uh, <laughs> And then like a couple weeks later, we go to Cancun and I'm, I'm still like not, I didn't get no contract or anything. So I'm kind of bummed out. I'm like enjoying my vacation. Like, damn, like I haven't gotten anything yet. And then literally I get an email from my manager saying like, Hey man, this is your contract. Check it out, read it. And when you're in, it, when you're in Cancun, this happened while I was in Cancun in vaca vacation, <laughs> vacation. So, and I'm like, frozen i'm like in my in the hotel like frozen like this this is it right here and he was like yeah man like and i was like what i gotta get out of here i need to go home i need to go train like forget this vacation <laughs> oh, hey were you on the beach or something like that relaxing i was we were about to go we were about to go down at the beach <laughs> and so you're like I, I need to go train yeah, I literally told my mom, Ma, I'm going to go buy me a plane ticket to go home because I need to go home and train. And she was all, Daniel, relax. You know, take a breather. You work hard every single day. Enjoy this vacation and then get back to camp. Okay, you're fine. Like, it's all good. And I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. So we were only there for like three more days, but still, I was just like, I got to get out of here. Yeah, like, how were each one of those days? Out. It was just kind of like, were you able to, you kind of, I'm sure you enjoyed yourself, but. You're just like, yeah. what's the word? Excited, elated. I mean, it's, there's no words. It's everything. It's everything I wanted it to be. You know, it's <laughs> it's exhilarating. You know, it's, yes. it's absolutely like I can't I can't describe the words. It's just like, man, I, I want to go. And even this whole process of the camp has been the best camp of my life. Like, I don't think I've had. I say it. I say it every camp, honestly. That this is the best camp of my life. But I'll say this: this is the weirdest camp of my life. Because I've never, ever felt so damn good in every single situation of the fight. Now, I don't recall like in any. Uh, I don't recall you had mentioned to me something before, and maybe uh, 
please remind me of what it was and let everybody know. Didn't you have some type of condition, uh, even to the last fight, something you needed to take care of uh, medically? What was that? Yes, I. So, uh, I was dealing with this for like over a year, and uh, it just got worse. And I had uh, enlarged tonsils where I couldn't, I wasn't right. able to breathe. So it was blocking my, my airway through training camp and uh, my last fight for my pro debut. So everybody was telling me, damn, Daniel, like your conditioning was there. You were on point. You were solid. But they, little did they know I could barely even breathe. It you know, I was like, like I, I was, I, and that's the thing. When I look back on the fight, it doesn't look like oh. I'm struggling. It looked like. I'm anything, but I remember during the fight, it was like I had to catch my breath sometimes. Like, like it was very strange. And then um, I had to go see a specialist because I wanted them removed. Especially, I wanted them out before this Bellator fight. Right. And then I, I saw a specialist, and he was like, "Man, we need to get these out now. Like, you need to get this out before you start another camp because it's it's not going to go good." And I was like, "Can I get this done after maybe after the Bellator fight because?" I'm in camp and I, I can't, I don't want to miss camp. And he was like, honestly, you're going to need it out now. Otherwise it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And I was like, God damn it. So we scheduled an appointment. I got my surgery and I was out for a week and a half. And that was probably the worst, worst thing ever. Sitting on the couch, eating uh, ice cream. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was going to say you had a lot of ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because I couldn't even enjoy it because I was like dying. Like, I couldn't open my mouth or anything so it was a it was a painful thing but that's the thing afterwards after i healed up oh my god i was just like a new person from the, the new breathing so your training must have been like night and day would you say yeah it was i i could go literally all all day it's only thing the only thing stopping me is my rest like obviously athletes need their rest but if i didn't need it i could literally train all day like even now like I can go on a run. I can go do this. I can go do that. And we just had sprints <laughs> at seven in the morning yesterday, and we did all these things. And I was telling my uh, my conditioning coach, I could keep going. What's the next? What's next? Like I can keep going. Give me another thing to do. Like I'm I'm fine. I'm wow. fresh. Like I'm perfect. And we're doing the sprints. We're doing the fields. We're doing everything. And I'm just like, man, everything feels so good. And even my sparring. You know, we'll do three straight rounds of hard sparring. And I'm telling Javier Mendez, I can do three more. I can do Jeez. six more. You can do those championship rounds already, baby. Huh? Hey, man, if they if they give me a title fight late notice, I would not mind taking that, honestly. I'm just a natural a natural born athlete where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly working, man. I don't, I don't do anything else but this. You but know, I'm so excited. I, I really don't. The, the Bellator thing, like you getting signed by Bellator for me, because just because I know, you know, Bellator and UFC, this is a whole two different animals. But with Bellator, I have not heard one complaint, you know, from a whole range of different fighters that are there. So it's kind of it's great. This is your second pro fight uh, yeah. to get started on this big thing. They you know, it's obvious that they're going to try to build you up. Or you just got to do your job, win. And the the world is your oyster. So the opportunity is is huge and this fight is going to be like a whole new daniel prodigy because of the whole tonsil yeah. thing and you breathing like i can only imagine what the hell you're going to look like that's what i'm saying man i mean i i'm excited to see that too i mean i'm, I'm seeing it every day <laughs> and i'm like i can't wait for all these people you know to just like oh see oh daniel gonzalez is on the card okay like he's low he's finally fighting local again and um my family too you know i just feel like they nobody's seen the best me yet i have not seen the best me yet right you know, i literally haven't but i'm so happy like i get to like showcase my skills in there again especially on that stage and that specific stage is where i want to make i want to open the bellator eyes you know they don't have a they don't have a flyweight division like a stacked solid flyweight division yeah i want to make i want to make my performance make them realize like damn we should make a flyweight division because this daniel kid we, i don't know who this guy is but you know he's solid you know he's putting in the work he's doing all this stuff so that's what I, that's my goal like i want to put it put me on the map like that yeah you know that's so possible i see like the way you even said it that i can obviously tell that you have uh, envisioned it well let's uh so the bellator you got a bright future it's obvious the 
the for them to open up that division. I mean, the, the ladies division in UFC 125 pounds is there. Uh, we got um, uh, DJ on the other side with UFC. I mean, all these lower weights are so exciting because it's just quick. You see all the skills that MMA has to offer. Um, yeah. I mean, so with you, what I was going to say, with you visualizing that, like I already can picture that. And by you saying it out loud, letting all the people that are watching kind of visualize that too, me visualizing it, man, it's it's already there. Your goal is set and, and you're working your butt off to get there. So I don't have any doubt it's going to happen, man. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's why I visualize every day. Like I always, I always tell myself I train my mind as much as I do my body, if not more. You know, because every single when I'm not training, like today I'm not training, but every second of the day I'm training my mind. Oh, like what's this? What's next? You know, just building, building every single day. That's that's just what I'm doing as a man, as an athlete, and as a fighter. You know, it's that's what you have to do. Because if if you stay stagnant the whole time, I don't. You just you're never gonna grow. And I see a lot of fighters who are very you know stuck all the time. They don't. They don't. They, they like they always say if it's not if it's not uh, broken don't fix it mm. you know do the same thing over and over again but me I like to do things different every single camp every single day I do something different I don't like to do the same things over and over again it's you know you always got to find new things how to peak yourself how to find yourself or you know build yourself in like in general you know because that's that's just what we do as as fighters and I never game plan during a fight. And people are always talking about, oh, I'm going to do this in the fight. Well, what happens if that doesn't work? Like, what right. are you going to do now? You know, and I understand, yeah, you can game plan against some fighters, but when a fighter, like in our division, they they have every single skill set. Everything. My, my division is all our guys are all top guys. They're all, they're all like, they're literally like the new breed of, of, of MMA guys. Like, we're just... Tech, technical wise uh all all the way around it's just, just like, putting it all together oh, it's like yeah, if we like, rewound time like at the beginning of ufc and that you know that's why i like going back there because that's where my love for the sport started when it was like karate versus the boxing guy you know and it's like oh you kind of figure oh well they're strong here they're strong there but now you know fast forward to today especially at these lower weights like you're saying th these people like you are training it's like mixed martial arts is the martial art yeah so yes, you can get better at boxing, but you need to also be weary of kicks. So then it's kickboxing. And it's just all of this together to where like DJ, I always have to bring him up because he's like a prime example of putting it all together, whether it's the clinch, whether it's a stand-up, mixing in his kicks, uh, his jujitsu, he's submitting people. It's just, it's everything. Like you said, like you need to know everything and be quick, you need to be explosive. And you have all those things. Uh, and like, I haven't even reached my full potential, and I'm not gonna lie, man. That's a scary thing. Because wait, now, remind us of your age. I'm 22 years old. That's because what do they say your prime is? What 26 to 28 or something? Yeah, man. Or 30. I'm like, yeah, and I'm 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 nervous for my opponents. Like I'm I'm scared <laughs> for them. Well, that's why they have a referee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it uh, hey it, the referee needs to do his job actually there was a fight yesterday that uh that the referee kind of messed up because it was just a one-sided beating and you know sometimes it's tough but hey you got to do your job referee needs to do his well let's yeah. tell everybody uh september 23rd two weeks from today bellator 183 i got my tickets so I will yeah. be there. So I'm hoping. I'm, I know I'm going to be probably seated by the family. We're going to be seeing these shirts, the Prodigy shirts. Yeah. We'll buy your shirts. Buy your shirt. Represent local fighters, all that good stuff. Now, let's quickly just talk about your opponent. Your opponent, Anthony Pretty Boy. Uh, I don't want to mess up his name, but Castrogen, I believe is how it's I pronounced. So. And he's one in one. Uh, didn't look like at least what I could find. Didn't have much uh, amateur experience compared to yours because you – you kind of already had a career by itself in your amateur days, yeah. right? So yes. what do you know about him and kind of how are you taking it? It seems like it just doesn't matter. You're going to go in there and do you, but how are you looking it, at this? It's a funny story, man, because you're not going to believe this. Uh, the guy that I just beat is his teammate. No way. <laughs> and he was, and it's funny because he was in the corner of that fight. Did you know this? Uh, I, I When did you find this out? 
I, I knew him because I recognized his face when they told me, when Bellator told me his name, I was like, I recognize this guy's name, I don't know why. And they sent me a picture of him, I was like, oh, this guy was, I just beat up his boy, okay, perfect, you know? Wow. So, uh, and, I mean, I don't know if his uh, teammate was helping him because, I mean, he's, his jaw was wired shut from me, you know? Uh, literally. Yeah, literally. Almost literally. His jaw was broken. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I remember after the fight, you know, when you go up to your, you go up to the team, the opposite team, you, you shake their hands and everything like yep. that. I remember I went up to him first, you know, shook his, shook his hand and was like, hey man, you know, congrats on your boy, your boy's good. And then uh, he like gave me a look. He was like, me and you are next, motherfucker. And I was like, what? I paused. The look was that. The look or he said that? No, he said that. No shit. Yeah, so I, I kind of like was going to go to his coach and I looked at him again and I was like, dude, your boy touched me twice. Like, I can go I can go right now if you want. Go get some shorts in the back. Like, I'm free right now. You know, I'll fight you for free right now. This happened at Dragon House 25 right after the this fight? This happened at Dragon House 25 and our coaches, our co my coach was like putting me away from each other. Like, hey, hey, let's get no out of here. Blah, blah, blah. So... I found it very, very interesting that, you know, he was the guy to fight, uh, to step up. And I was very happy about it too, because I was like, man, I can't wait to shut this guy <laughs> oh up. Like, God. you know, it, it just, it brought, it just brought more and more excitement to me because, you know, he saw the fight, you know, close hand like that. And he thinks, oh, Daniel's going to fight me this way. Daniel's going to do this. Daniel's going to do that. I know what Daniel's going to do. No, 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 no. I'm a different fighter every single fight. Oh my I can God. adapt to any whatever you bring to me. I'm gonna adapt to it. I'm gonna beat you at your own game. I'm gonna just beat you at your your strengths, where you're weakest, where where you're strongest. It does not matter. I'm a different fighter every single fight, and he's gonna see that on that day. Wow, I am hyped. Like before, I was just excited to see you fight, and then it was the whole tonsil <laughs> thing. Like, oh, I'm excited to see you after you know you're able to breathe. Like that's gonna be amazing. And now there's a backstory to this. Holy crap! Yeah, so I can't wait, man. I don't, and that's the thing too. Uh, I don't watch tape on my guys. I don't know what he, uh, what he does. My coaches said that he was a Muay Thai, Muay Thai artist or so, uh, trans transitioning into MMA. So my uh, my coaches dissect my opponents. They like to watch, see what they do, but they never tell me uh, they're stri like, you know, like oh tendencies? he does this. Like tendencies, yeah, like right? they like yeah, like they don't say oh he he bends his head to the right or he lowers this hand like they don't they never tell me that kind of situation they just kind of tell me like what to do in sparring what to do during our mid session or just overall everything you know it's it's like is it kind of like they're that. preparing you without really saying those things exactly like they we always train for uh, I train for everybody I don't train for one specific person I never do that I train for every scenario of the fight because. That's where I take it. I can take it anywhere. Just like my last fight, they were just saying, "Oh, it was a striking, uh, a striking clinic or anything." But if you look at the first round where uh, he tried to take me down, and he had my back, and I, I remember telling him, "I was like, dude, let me go. You're not going to take me down. You might as well just let go and break free because you're not going to take me down." And then he got mad at me when I said that, so he tried to do a suplex, and then I reversed it, got on top, and pounded him a little bit and i i told him, i was like i told you so you gotta listen to me next time okay in the next round listen this is in the so fight we were, yeah we, we were talking a lot of shit during the it fight, looked like you know? it, i wish yeah. there was a better microphone because i swear it looked like there was a little banter but it's like what are you guys yeah. saying my god i know i wish they could like us but they can't <laughs> I know. Man, that's amazing. Like, I mean, I don't know if that got set up uh, or, you know, or maybe the planets and the stars were aligned or whatever the hell happened. But that's you can't write a better Daniel Prodigy Gonzalez story. Like the, the more we continue on this journey, uh, we find out new things. And this is just crazy. So September 23rd, Daniel Prodigy. And if you if you don't got your tickets already, uh, uh, promo code Gonzalez. Yes, sir. Promo code Gonzalez, see us there. I'll be there. I'll be talking to everybody. You know, I'm always everywhere. Yeah. Just having a good time. And uh, man, first off, thank you for for this time. You're super busy, but you you always kind of get back to me. We figure it out. And uh, so I'm appreciative of this time. Thank you for the opportunity to do the shirts. So the shirts yeah, are on my website as well. And uh, man, I'm just excited to watch this fight. It's two weeks away. Yeah. Congratulations on everything you got going on, and uh, you deserve it, man. You, you have a good attitude, 
you exude a positive, you know, uh, energy to everyone around you except your opponent. But uh, I know after the, <laughs> <laughs> but after the fight, after the fight, it's all respect, right? Of course, of course, yeah. That's, that's the perfect way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I've been talking to you, so it's like, that's what I've gathered. It's all good, but when it comes to your opponent, ne whoever's next, yeah. hey, we'll, we'll shake hands uh, after the fight. After, after, you know, not before. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. Well, hey, Daniel, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. I will see you September 23rd, and uh, hey, we'll talk real soon. Thanks again. Thank, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. You have a good day. Hey, you too, brother. Take care. All right, Daniel Prodigy Gonzalez. So the shirts, I'll leave the little link right there if you want to go ahead and support him. And by supporting him, you also support us because all of these different fighters, up and comers, just about anyone um, doing these interviews, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but uh, we love doing what we do here. So whether you know Prodigy personally, whether you're becoming a fan, if you, you saw the fight going on right now, this guy is going to be a superstar. He's 22 years old. His future is beyond bright. And of course, we'll keep you updated as we go along. So hopefully I see you there September 23rd at Bellator. And if you see me, come say what's up. And until next time, peace.